Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Ellen and I'm here to talk about some books. The books that I read in the month of August. Totally forgot what month we were in. <laughs> and I read 13 books so I'm very happy. Also this is the first time I'm filming on this brand new camera. Uh how are we feeling? I like the automatic uh focusing. <laughs> because I did not have that before and I couldn't remember how to change that on my old camera but also I'm using this camera because I have like no light coming from outside and my old camera would not have been able to have picked me up at all with no light <laughs> like this camera a lot also let me know because I haven't tested the sound on this camera so we'll see how the sound is <laughs> I hope the sound is good but hello hello why am I sweating? <laughs> I want to get into some books because I'm very happy with the 13 books that I read for this month. Do I have statistics? You bet I do. So for the format, I read five hardcover and eight paperback. For a year, I read six 2021 books and seven books that did not come out in 2021. Uh, for authors, I read five white authors and eight BIPOC authors. And all of the authors were female. Every single author I read this month was a female, and that was completely done by accident. That was not on purpose, but uh, it's what happened. Um, I read one middle grade, four YA, and eight adult books. The shortest book I read was 145 pages, and then the longest book I read was 609 pages. Total, I read 4,093 pages, which averages to 132 pages a day. Which I also found this quite interesting because I read the same amount of books last month. I read 13 books last month. Um, but the page count was a lot lower. Total was like 3,529. I read two poetry, six romance, two contemporary, two historical fiction, and one fantasy. I was very much in a romance mood. Now for stars, I gave one two star, three three stars, four four stars, and five five stars. Again, did not plan on doing that. <laughs> but I kind of like how that looks because it averaged to four stars. So quality and quantity, it was a very good reading month. I'm very happy with it. Okay, so now it's time to actually talk about these books since there are 13. I do want to kind of get through them pretty quickly because I don't want to be here for a long time. Also, my hair has gotten so long. I get so distracted by it so often. And like always, I'm going to go in order of my least favorite to my favorite. And that's what we're going to do. For my least favorite, my two star, Sea of Strangers by Lang Leave. I was really hoping to like this. I was hoping Lang Leave was going to become another favorite poetry author of mine. Maybe I'll give one of her other ones another chance, but I didn't really like this one. My notes on it are, I literally just have two things. I wrote so basic and average and then bored, which just sums this up. I don't even think I can tell you what kind of poetry this is like what this poetry is about. It was fine. That's it. <laughs> I, I don't have anything else to say about this. It was just okay. Do I need to say more? I don't think so. So I'm not. Now we're in the three stars and my first three star is Julian the Phantoms, Whatever Happens. Um, this one's by Candace Buford. This was so much better than the first book. <laughs> the first book was just, you know, the, the first season, literally word for word what the dialogue is, except they took out like key scenes from the TV show. Don't know why they did that, but this was so much better. This is more like a prequel. So we're following Julie, like before her mom dies. I think we like follow it for a whole year before her mom dies and then we follow the boys the 24 hours before they die. I really actually enjoyed the writing of this. I thought this was much better writing. It did also answer a lot of questions 
Um, cause after watching the TV show, there's been a lot of like fan theories about certain things. Um, and this answered some of that. I also loved how it ended because it ended back where like the TV show ended. Not the crazy scene at the end, but like the one where she's talking to the boys in the studio. Oh my God. I could not think of what that word was, um, in the studio. And they like have their moment, but like it cuts off right as they're all hugging. This tells you what happens after all the hugging. So I enjoyed that ending and I enjoyed this book so much more than the first one. I do think that they did my boy Reggie wrong. I don't think this is what Reggie is like. I don't know. It was just a lot of things felt off with Reggie. I was just like, mm. I don't think that's his character. I enjoyed this and this makes me really want a second season. So Netflix, where is this announcement? Like there's not even an announcement about what's going on with the show. And I just, <sighs> we need answers. Okay. The fans of Julian the Phantoms have been so patient. We deserve an answer. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> my little rant. My next three stars actually kind of a disappointment. I was expecting to love this and I didn't. Um, but yeah, it is still a three star. So it's like, okay. But I read Velvet was the night by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I, I read her other book, Mexican Gothic really enjoyed it. I think I gave that one four stars. Um, this one I gave three stars. I still have a feeling that there is a Silvia Moreno Garcia book out there that I'm going to give five stars. And so I'm going to, I'm going to find it. I'm going to keep reading her books, even though I just find them okay until I find her five star book. Cause I just, I have a feeling one of them's five stars. So Velvet Was the Night is a historical fiction mystery noir. Uh, that takes place in the 1970s in Mexico. Yeah. And we're following two characters. We're following Maita and Elvis. Maita, I think, oh my God, I listened to the audiobook as well. So I knew how to pronounce these names and I still think I'm pronouncing them wrong. But Maita, she has a neighbor named Leonora who is like, Hey, I'm going to be out of town for a couple days. Can you watch my apartment? Watch my cat for me. I'll pay you. And Maita's like, yeah, sure. That's fine. And then a couple days go by. She's not back. Turns out Leonora has gone missing. And so Maita's on like this journey to try and find Leonora. And in the process, she finds out a lot of not great things about what's going on in her town and her city. Um, and within like the politics of the world. So there is also a lot of, um, 1970s, political stuff going on that I did not know. So that was actually really interesting to learn about. But then we also have Elvis, who is a hawk, which they explain in the beginning here that the hawks are an officially financed, organized, trained and armed repressive group. Um, the main purpose of which since its founding in September, 1968 has been the control of leftist and anti-government students. Um, so that's what a hawk was. And we follow Elvis, who is a hawk, and he has the task of trying to track down Leonora. But while he's doing that, he's also stalking Maita because he feels like Maita has something to do with Leonora's missing. And so, yeah, it's just that. I think that's all I'm going to say about it. It's, it, it's one of those things where like you go into a book expecting something and you, it's not what you had expected. Yeah. Cause it was very slow paced and also the stakes were like pretty low throughout the entire book, except for maybe that very last scene, the stakes weren't that low. <laughs> um, but even though they were kind of high, I still just didn't really care. I think, yeah, my, my interest and my intrigue with this book was just very low. Also too, like since this is a historical fiction mystery noir, I read another historical fiction mystery noir book this month. And I thought that book, not to, I know I shouldn't compare books, but like I can't help it when I read the same genre in the same month. That book I thought did a much better job. You'll see it with um, noir and the mystery. But this did a good job with the historical fiction aspect, but I just thought this didn't do as well of a job 
um, with the noir feeling and the mystery. Like the mystery just, I didn't care. <laughs> I think that was the main problem with this book was that I just didn't care about a lot of things. I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about what was going on. So that's why it's all three stars. And then my last three star is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. Uh, this is the sequel to The Kiss Quotient, which I read last month and absolutely loved it. This one, not so much. It was fine. Like, it was okay. There were aspects that I liked, but overall, I think... Uh, our main character, our girl, Esme, Esme, um, she annoyed me. I also just didn't really feel the chemistry between our two main characters. I also didn't like that our ma our guy main character, Kai, just kept describing her as, like, porn star hot. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> and he kept, like, talking about how, like, sexy and hot her body is and how she looks like a porn star and I'm just like I makes me uncomfortable don't say that I liked Kai but I just didn't like that one like thought that kept running through his head <laughs> and I, I just was not a fan of Esme I found her just really annoying and this also has that trope of like bad communication which I don't want to fault this book for that because there is a point to the miscommunication um oh i should probably explain what this book's about so so in the his quotient there is a character named kai he's a very side character but in this one he's the main character we're following his romance story and he is on the autistic spectrum and so he does have difficulties um i guess with communicating and he has like these little like quirks that other people find weird or different but I really liked being inside of his head and just like understanding what's going on and I also liked that um his like autism was different from Stella's autism from the first book the kiss quotient so you see that like not all autism is the same there are very they are very different from each other so I liked that but I just really couldn't get behind these characters and I don't know, I just did not see the chemistry between them. I did very much enjoy all the side characters. They were my favorite. I loved the side characters. And I still really enjoy Helen Huang's writing style. Anyway, yeah, so three stars, it was fine. Okay, so four stars. The first four star that I have is The Mismatch by Sarah Jaffrey. This is another case of I went in expecting something and it's not what I got. Because I went in thinking this was a romance, which it kind of is, but it's more so like a hard-hitting contemporary with some romance thrown in. Which is why I didn't find this in the romance section of the bookstore. So this is about Soraya. She just graduated college. Uh, she's an Iranian-British woman. And she meets Magnus on like the day of her graduation, who she always thought during college was like this typical British lad i think that's the term <laughs> that they use in england but she starts realizing that there's uh more to him than just what's on the surface and they kind of create this romance but there's also a lot of like family uh drama that's going on a lot of trauma from childhood and a lot of trauma present day um, she's also, you know, dealing with the fact that, like, she just graduated college and she still has no idea what she wants to do with her, like, career and stuff. So she's feeling very lacking in that. But we also, on top of that, there's more, we also have, like, a multi-generational uh, story going on because we go back and forth between present day, or 2014 in England and 1970 um, in Iran. So we see, like, her mom's love story along with her own love story and the differences between them but also like the 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 different complications and traumas that are going on it's very interesting i it was weird how like i went in expecting like a light-hearted romance and that is not what i got but yet i still really enjoyed what i read the only issue i had with it was that it was incredibly slow paced like this is not a long book. It's just under 350 pages 
and this took me so long to read. I think this took me like three weeks to read. I did enjoy the romance aspect. I kind of wish there was more romance because that was my favorite part of the story, but I did still enjoy seeing how like different cultural expectations can affect people even though parts of it were very difficult to read. And I also just wanted more from Magnus. I felt like we didn't get a lot of who he was and his character, but overall I enjoyed it, so four stars. My next four star is Where Hope Comes From by Nikita Gill. I read Nikita Gill's other poetry collection, Fierce Fairy Tales, last month. Five stars. It was fantastic. One of the best things I've ever read. So obviously I needed to pick up more Nikita Gill. And this is her most recent poetry collection. Uh, it's poems of resilience, healing, and light. There's a lot of focus on the year 2020. Oh, sorry. I wrote a note here and it says this is like a self-help motivational therapy book. It kind of is. I definitely didn't like this as much as Fierce Fairy Tales. That one was still fantastic, but I still enjoyed this one. I just think there were some poems that I just did not connect with and just found like meh, but there also were a lot of poems that I really quite enjoyed. I just really love her writing style. I think she has a really unique writing style and I can't wait to read more from her because she does have more. So I'm going to try and fit them in when I can. My next four star is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is a chunker. This was my 609 page book. Surprisingly, this took me like shorter to read than The Mismatch. The Mismatch took me like three weeks. This took me, I think like a week and a half. I love fast paced stories. They're easier to fly through. But yeah, this is very like fast paced. This is also a sequel to, um, the City of Brass. Sorry, it's sitting right over there. I had to look at it to remember. But yeah, so this is the second book in the Dave Abad series. It's an adult fantasy about Nari, Dara, and Ali, but mainly Nari. <laughs> She's our main character. She's fantastic. I love her a lot. I don't even know how to describe what this book is about. But Nari is in the heed. She has powers of healing. Ali is the prince of Devabad. I don't like, I don't know what to say because this is a sequel, so it's like spoilers. Um, and then Dara is a djinn. It's all we're gonna, I literally am like, I feel like anything I say is gonna be a spoiler. Um, but I did really enjoy the sequel to this series, more so the ending. I felt like there was a lot to drag through in the beginning and the middle, but the ending, oh my god, the way it ended was just one of the most exciting things I've ever read. Um, I really enjoy the very, very subtle love triangle. Like, it's so subtle. But like, I'm Team Ali, in case anyone wants to know. I think in the first book I was Team Dara, but I'm very disappointed in Dara with this second book, so I'm Team Ali. You know what? You know what? No, I'm not team anyone because Ollie as well. I'm just like, mm. I mean, if I had to choose, I'd choose Ollie. But you know what? She can do better. Oh, I really love what they're, I mean, ugh, I shouldn't say love, but I like what they're doing with um, Muntadir's character and Jamshid's character. I think they're like written so well and their storylines are, are so interesting, even though like, uh, it's so funny too because throughout the whole book I was hating Muntadir, hating him and then like the end happens and I'm just like well now I kind of like him <laughs> still not enough to like want to ever be friends with him but like enough to be like okay you know what maybe you're not all bad i'm still however very confused about the politics of this world i remember that was like an issue with the first book i was just like i don't understand what's going on i don't understand the politics but i'm just here for the ride same thing here i just i don't understand the politics i keep reading it thinking eventually i'll understand it i just don't i don't the politics are too complicated for me but i still have a very fun time and I'm just along for the ride. Gave it four stars. 
Yes. My last four star is the other historical fiction mystery noir book that I read. And that is The Silver Blonde by Elizabeth Ross. So this uh, takes place in the 1940s in Hollywood, which I already love. I love that setting. And we follow Clara and she is a vault girl at a production studio. So she deals with a lot of the like film reels and putting them in vaults, taking them out of vaults. But she wants to be an editor and she just gets promoted to become editor. And then on her last day of working in the vaults, she is waiting for her friend Gil, who is a screenwriter on the same film that she's kind of going to be like working on as an editor. While she's waiting for him, she goes to a vault and finds a dead body. And it happens to be the star actress of said movie. So now that like leads her on this like murder mystery quest to try and find out why this girl died, um, who would have done it, all this stuff. And it takes her to like the, the dark area of Hollywood. I enjoyed this a lot. I, in the beginning, I wasn't too into it. It was like going very slowly in the beginning. But by like the halfway mark, enjoying it so much. I had a blast. Um, I really enjoyed this noir setting and I thought the like story was just very compelling. Definitely by like the halfway point it got compelling. And I also just liked that I could not predict it. I, I kept like flip flopping. I kept going back and forth between like, oh, it's gotta be this person. Oh, maybe it's not this person. Maybe it's this person. Oh wait, no, no. Is it this person? So I like that, you know, there was a good amount of suspects and you didn't know who it could be. In the beginning, I was just like, you know what? It's this person. I just know it. And then I was wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed the silver blonde. Four stars. All right, now we're on to my five star books. So the first one I have here is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is my favorite in the series by far. And in this one, we're following Quan, oh, my bookmark. In this one, we're following Quan, who was Kai's brother. And I loved Quan in both The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test, so I was very happy to get his love story and make him a main character. Oh, and then we also have Anna, who is a violinist, but she's been having um, difficulties lately. Yeah, she feels burned out and just like mm -mm, nothing else can do better than what she's already done kind of a thing. Also, <laughs> the beginning of this book, she was in a relationship and then the guy's like, I want an open relationship. And she's like, okay. So she then decides to meet with someone online, ends up being Quan. And they have this great romance. But what I loved most about this book was that it wasn't so heavy on the romance. It was, the romance was more of like the side story. The main story was just kind of like trauma and their grief and just like dealing with a lot of that. I was also not appreciating a lot of the gaslighting that Anna's family did to her, but like I, I, I liked reading about that because it really showed her character and who she is and kind of like seeing how she handles things and how she reacts to things. And it's just, it's really interesting. And I just, oh, and I loved Quan so much. Quan's a new book boyfriend of mine. <laughs> I really love these characters. I really like connected with them and just, felt for them and like all the things that they were going through in life because they're both going through different traumatic things and I just really felt for them and I just wanted to give each of them a hug but I was happy that they kind of like had each other to help get through it and then I know I gave this five stars but I do have like one little issue with it but like thankfully the issue wasn't like enough for me to bring it down to a four star but the one issue is like I just wish things had wrapped up a little bit slower I feel like the ending and like wrapping things up just went very quickly. I would have liked a little bit more time spent on it, especially from Quan's point of view. I feel like the ending when we were wrapping things up was just mainly from Anna's and I would have wanted more than just like one chapter from Quan's point of view. That's it. But I loved it. Five stars. Now my next five stars are like really hard because I, I don't know what order to put them in. Okay, for right now, this is what it's going to be. It might change by the end of the year, but for right now, 
Heartstopper. I read all three volumes of Heartstopper and they're all five stars. So one, two, and three were fantastic. And this is literally like the cutest romance I think I have ever read in my entire life. So the order for me goes volume two, ooh, then volume one, and then my favorite is volume three. And I'm very excited for volume four. I know it's technically out, but it's not out in America yet. The fourth volume comes out in December in America, and I'm upset because I want it now and I know a lot of people have already read it but I gotta wait till December but anyway this is just a fantastic cute gay romance series you know Heart Supper 1 was like following them meeting and kind of like about some of the bullying that one of the characters went through and then the second book they're like together and we deal with one of the other characters coming out journey and story and trying to like figure out what his sexuality is and then the third one we deal a lot more with bullying again uh as well as is it a spoiler it might be a spoiler no well, it is, but I feel like it's important to know about go before going into this. But we also deal with eating disorders. And in this one, th this like this whole book just takes place um, on their school trip to France. Love it. Love it. I want to go to France. I just want to go everywhere. Can I just travel the world? That's all I want to do. These are just the cutest things ever. And I love them. And I'm not a fan of the art style. Like, this is not the kind of art style that I like. But by the way, these are graphic novels. But, like, it's not my favorite art styling. But that doesn't affect the story for me. So story, still fantastic. Okay, and I've decided for the last book, the highest favorite book of this month is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I freaking loved this so main reason for picking this up i feel like i want to talk about it because uh my cousin and i my cousin Gemma, which i believe she also watches my videos hello um <laughs> we decided to read this book together which we still need to talk about it i you know what after i'm done here i'm gonna text you Gemma, and i'm gonna see if we can schedule a time where we can talk and discuss this book so Hopefully we can discuss it before you see this video. This is Beach Read. I also took a lot of notes because I loved it. I also read this within two days. That never, that like rarely happens for me. Thankfully, I was able to fly through it so quickly. It is fantastic. This is a, an adult romance. Should I just like read the side flap? Because I'm not doing a good job. So we have Augustus. He's an acclaimed author of literary fiction. And then we have January who writes best-selling romance. So while she pens a happily ever after, he kills off his entire cast. They're polar opposites. In fact, the only thing they have in common is that for the next three months, they're living in neighboring beach houses, broke and bogged down with writer's block. Then one hazy evening, one thing leads to another and they strike a deal designed to force them out of their creative ruts. Augustus will spend the summer writing something happy and January will pen the next great American novel. She'll take him on field trips worthy of any rom-com montage, and he'll take her to interview uh, to interview surviving members of a backwoods death cult. There's cults in this book. <laughs> um, everyone will finish a book, and no one will fall in love. But also, they're like kind of rivals because they were college rivals. But also, too, like we're dealing with a lot of what I feel like needs to be mentioned in the flat but isn't um the fact that she's dealing with a lot of grief her father just recently passed away and she learned some things about her father that were not too great that kind of like changes her like perspective of her dad and so it's just like all there's because a good amount of this book is not just romance it's also like dealing with grief and dealing with guilt and just that whole kind of thing. So I really like that. Also, there is a lot of cult stuff, <laughs> which I was not expecting. 
Um, so don't let this like cover or this title fool you. It's definitely more of a hard hitting romance because he is also dealing with his own stuff. But I'm not going to say what that is because that is a spoiler. I even cried at the end. I was crying. I was sobbing. I was actually like sobbing. Because I love how like I was just like, mm, I'm a cold hard person. You can't get me to cry. You're trying to make me feel things for this person. It's not going to happen. And then all of a sudden it happens. Oh, why is the author just described me? <laughs> so uh, our main character, uh, January, is me. <laughs> 29, miserable, broke, very single. She even has the same car as me. And her birthday's in January. Just saying. There were a lot of similarities between me and our main character, which I loved. Oh, I also really loved her writing style, like Emily Henry's writing style, because after the first chapter, I literally wrote, already love this book, fantastic writing. After the first chapter, I was already in love. And I like that um, the emotional connection before there's even a physical connection, loved that. It's also a, like a nice slow burn romance, which is always great. This was the moment like right before I cried where I was like, am I supposed to sympathize? Because I don't. This explanation is proving again that these two people suck. And then a few pages later, I'm sobbing. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend this book. I cannot wait to read her um, other one, People We Meet in vac on Vacation. And this is it. We're done. Uh, yeah, so those are all the books that I read in the month of August. I keep wanting to say July. My mouth just wants to say July. It was a very good reading month. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do also have a movie wrap-up for the month of August slash TV wrap-up. So go ahead and I'll link that down below so you can check it out. And I will see you guys later with more videos. Bye!